and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to talk about transit in the area and a way that you can give your input onto what you would like to see. My guest is Jean Canavas. Cavassus. Cavassus, I'm so sorry, um, from Hampton Roads Transit. And you guys are conducting a survey right now to ask people basically what they want in, in a regional transit system. Correct. We're actually building a, an initiative. So the first part of it, it's in three phases. The first part of it is the survey to basically gather what the public, not just our ridership, but the general public of Hampton Roads would like to see in not only transit, but transportation initiatives in general. That could also mean not just bus, light rail, but park and rides, uh, ferries, bicycling, lanes, things like that as well. So we want to gather that information. We want to, the second phase would be to put together a plan of what that would be, what the public wants. And then the third phase would be figuring out the funding source of it. So right now people can go to, uh, the address for the um, survey is connecthamptonroads.com. Connect or you can get there through the HRT website. Correct, and there's okay. a banner ad on our website, mm -hmm. which is gohrt.com. And what, um, so you're asking people, I mean, I took this survey a while back, really a broad array of things. Um, what you're trying to find out then how your, what your riders want, what your current customers want, although I suspect you have other ways of getting information from them. But for people who don't take transit on a regular basis, what would prompt them to take it, what their concerns are, what their needs are? Exactly. We're, we're really trying to get uh, the pulse of the public of, of, of reaching in and seeing whether they even want. You know, it, So it is important to even take the survey, even if you're not interested, look at it and say you're not. You well, know? and that's one of the things that interests me, too, is because I felt like, yes, I want this. I want this, I want this, I want this. But, you know, I'll also tell people, yes, I want a bike lane, and I'm going to ride my bike to work, and in truth, I'm lucky if I do it one or two days a week. You know, there's, it's harder to actually, you know, put those things into practice that, that you say you value. Well, it, it really is. And, it, and for us, we're looking at, you know, we have such broad not just age demographics, but ge demographics in general. But even if you look at right now, the millennials that are coming in, they're very, very interested in public transit. Gosh, they don't want cars. They you don't. Know? It's a hassle, it's an expense, it's a complication. It absolutely is. And it's changed so much where I think about when I was in that age category, I was looking at where would I get a job? And that's where I would move. But today, that that age group looks more of, where do I want to live? Yeah, it's different. And then it's, I'll get a job. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is. And they really do look at, you know, who has got the most mobility in general, right around, that everything is, is reachable. And so for us as a region even, let alone the individual cities, to keep that new workforce that's coming in, we need to be looking at our future because, you know, the CEOs, they may never use public transit, but their staff most likely will, and especially in the future. So it's something to really look at. So where do we go from here? Because the, the, the transit system now is grew up from two separate transit systems and really from individual cities' bus systems and sort of became stitched together. And as you said, the funding model is is, is may be outdated because Hampton pays for the Hampton miles. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and so we connect people within Hampton or the parts of routes, but in terms of looking out over what the region needs, it's a little harder. It, it really is, and it still will come back to the individual cities too. For us, we keep talking about regionalism, but every city has its unique needs. And because of different sizing and different different reasons of funding, every city takes a, a different slice. So you may see a, a much more robust transit system operating in Norfolk than you see operating in Hampton because of its funding. So and, it and because puts of its a burden on the back. Too. You've got, you know, you've got a central downtown in Norfolk where a lot of people work and with limited parking. And so there are other things that combine to make transit needs different. There really are. And then, then where it does get sticky is the fact that you may have a good service running out of Hampton, but if you then take it over to try to get to Chesapeake, you may get to Chesapeake, but 
the time of operation may not be able to get you home from work. Right, right. And I think that's one of the issues, too, now. I see a lot of um, kids in high school or recent high school grads who the only job they can get at the moment is waiter, waitress kind of a thing, and they get off work too late for public transportation sometimes. Exactly. So it's this, you have to have a car to get a job, you have to have a job to get a car. It's a, it's a tough cycle for these kids. It absolutely is. And that's where we're trying to get a, a, a good pulse of, of what the public wants and then try to build around that and to build one that would, uh, would work for this region. So what are you seeing so far? What is the survey? And I know people still have time to fill it out and we're encouraging to do that, but, but some early uh, glimpses into what folks are saying. Well, one thing that's really got us exciting is it, we've been blown away with the response. We are right now at a little over 9,000 responses. So for a survey, that's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, 1,600 is a big survey. This is much more than a sample. This is really getting some serious numbers. So what we are seeing, though, is that, especially with folks who do not use public transit, they want to see a safe system. They want to see a system that's easy to understand. Um, there's so many segments in there that we're looking at, but those two really come to the top of the list right now. So, and I know for me, if I'm in another city, there's always that concern of, if I, if I use public transit, I really don't know how it works, and I don't want to be embarrassed climbing on a bus and not knowing the drill. So, and that kind of shows up already in, in this survey as well, so. Now, some of the things you're asking about light rail. I mean, some of these things are very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. How would we get what we want, you know, without having to pay for it? <laughs> I guess that's what we all want. And we know that the fare, box is, not, the fare is not covering anywhere near the full cost of, of running a transit No, system. it's not. The fare box actually covers close to around 20% of the overall cost of it. Um, the cities themselves bear about 35% of the overall cost. And then, of course, that's broken into the six Different. cities. Right, so you right. may have, well, like Hampton right now covers, I think it's right around $4 million a year in cost versus, say, um, Norfolk that is right around $18 million. And then you have Chesapeake that's about $2 million. So you can see where we're so patched work mm -hmm. in. It's very difficult to make that connect and make it connect seamlessly. So. Do we think we can get any state or federal money, or is it really going to have to come down to the localities? I mean, you did get some grants for the light rail and some other things. We did, and that's what we really want to look into, is the ability to, to flex more of that, to flex to where, you know, we'd like to see that burden lifted from the cities more to where our, our, our funding is more of a dedicated source. We're not sure what that would be or how that's we're going to get there. And that's all part of the plan. And basically that third phase of the, the plan is to determine. Figuring out what we want, figuring out how to do it, and then figuring out how to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's the hard part. Kind of sounds you like know, my that's... personal budget. Yeah, yeah, it always comes down to that. But yeah. that's the trick. Okay, so um, are we thinking then, I mean, I, I know you talked about on the survey about ferries, about some other things maybe that don't involve going through one of the two bridge tunnels to get to the other side of the water. Do you think that um, is going to see a lot of support? Do you think that's going to fly? I, you know, it's interesting. Um, there's always been a lot of talk about a fast ferry service that would run between Hampton and Norfolk. That, it, you know, there is chatter on that. I'm not sure at this stage how much, but you're right. That is, that can be part of the the overall plan as well. So. I mean, certainly when you look at the summer <laughs> and the ability to get back and forth on the roads we have, it's limited. Um, there's almost always delays. Now, it loosens up a lot after Labor Day. It but. does, but if you look at it, we're, as, as a region, nationally, we're ve ranked very, very high in traffic congestion. And it's almost exclusively because of the bridges and tunnels it and really because is. of problems. If you look at the average commute on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not that bad. The problem here is that when it's bad, it's half an hour, hour bad. That's <laughs> it's right. a lot of bad. And, and if you look at a lot of that, too, this region can only grow. Yet your main arteries, your bridges and stuff, we don't really have the ability to broaden or expand much more than we already are. So we've got to look at a long-range plan of how are we going to deal with that. 
So, you know, we feel public transit can definitely be a large player in that and be a big help to the region. Okay, so tell us again, connecthamptonroads.com? Correct. Connect Go take the survey through the end of September. And um, the, uh, the other thing I do want to say is for people who don't know how to use the bus system here, um, some, some local folks developed an app to help you tell when the bus is coming and to give you that sort of up-to-date information. I mean, there are a lot of ways that open source uh, local government groups are working with that data to give people more information and to make it friendlier to use. Exactly. And there are some apps that are out there right now, and we're working on some as well. And once again, that always goes back to the Connect Hampton Roads of us trying to develop things as we grow, and it's always, you know, it's a funding issue, but we are trying to make things better and easier to understand. Okay, so. well, that sounds great. Thank you, Gene, for coming by. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you don't ride the, the public transit system, it might be something you want to give a thought to, and at least either way, go in, fill out the survey, and let them know what you want, what you don't want, and uh, what would work for your situation. Thank you. Thank you.